Over 60 years ago, Dr. Ferry Porsche couldn't find the car of his dreams. So he built one, a full-blooded, unapologetically pure sports car. Since then, every Porsche has answered a dream of one kind or another. Introducing the Panamera, the first true sports car for four. And another bold line on the family tree. The Porsche Panamera, four, uncompromised. Good afternoon, business policy class. My name is Whitney Martin. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Turner. And I'm Ryan Hall. Chapter 11 deals with the interdependence between strategy formulation and implementation. Porsche dealt with this issue in the implementation of their key performance indicator strategy. Today, we're going to first talk about Porsche's history. Next, we're going to talk about Porsche's strong relationship with Volkswagen and how this changed over the years. And finally, we're going to talk about the implementation of the balanced scorecard, which we talked about in Chapter 11. Founded by Ferdinand Porsche in 1931, he was also known for designing the first Volkswagen Beetle. Porsche started out as a consulting firm but didn't build cars. In 1939, the first Porsche was developed, the Porsche 64, using many components of the Volkswagen Beetle. Ferdinand Porsche designed the military version of the Volkswagen Beetle and named it Kugelwagen and the Swimwagen. The Swimwagen was amphibious. The Kugelwagen might look familiar because it's been used in many movies, more famously in Indiana Jones. At the end of World War II, Ferdinand Porsche was arrested for war crimes for building these two vehicles and in prison for about a year and a half. The first Porsche was actually sold to the public and was the Porsche 356. Here's a picture of it. And some interesting facts is it was a, it was a lightweight, nimble handling sports car available in a hardtop or convertible. In 2004, Sports Car International ranked the 356C 10 on their list of the top 10 sports cars of the 1960s. In the first manufacturing run, only 50 cars were built. It is estimated approximately half of the total production of 76,356s still survive. Porsche's company logo was based on the coat of arms of Free People's State at Wartenburg. In 1972, the company's legal form was changed from limited partnership, KG, to public limited company, AG. During the 1970s, the first CEO was appointed, Dr. Ernst Furman, and was later replaced by Peter W. Schutz. Peter Schutz, an American manager, greatly expanded sales, primarily in the United States. And in 1990, Porsche drew up a memorandum of understanding with Toyota to learn and benefit from Japan's production methods. All right, everyone, let's see who's actually paying attention. Who can tell me what the first Porsche vehicle actually sold to the public was? You might have thought the answer was the Porsche 64, but actually that was the first car that Porsche designed. They never actually built it for the public. The correct answer is the Porsche 356. Over the years, Porsche and VW have collaborated on many occasions. In 2005, Porsche took an 18.65% stake in the VW Group. This prevented a possible takeover, which was rumored to be by Daimler Chrysler, BMW, and Renault. In March 2007, Porsche increased its holding of VW shares to 30.9%. This triggered a takeover bid under German law. Porsche formally announced it did not have any intentions to take over VW. Next, we're going to talk about how Porsche implemented their balanced scorecard. In order to keep their strong position in the automobile market, Porsche had to develop a way to use the huge amount of knowledge they had attained at their dealerships and somehow turn it into a profit. Porsche had to ask four questions to secure this position. First, financially. Second, internally. Third, through learning and growth. And fourth, through customer satisfaction. Of course, the new idea was met with a lot of resistance, but the director of sales, Dr. Andreas Offerman, knew that something had to be done. The reason it was met with much resistance was because they had tried a very similar project once before, 
So they decided to rename the project Porsche Key Performance Indicators, in other words, KPI. For those of you that don't know what a balanced scorecard is, or if you haven't seen an example, this is actually an example of Porsche's balanced scorecard. And this is what they used to shape their vision and strategy. First was the financial question. They asked themselves to succeed financially, how should we appear to our shareholders? Next was internally. To satisfy our shareholders and customers, what business processes should we excel at? The next one was learning and growth. To achieve our vision, how will we sustain our ability to change and improve? And finally, the customer satisfaction. To achieve our vision, how should we appear to our customers? In order to accurately measure its success, they decided to test the market idea in France, Italy, and the United Kingdom. They intentionally left out Germany in order to prevent a home market bias. Data was collected from individual dealers in those markets and was then analyzed to determine what needed the most attention. The results that were obtained were benchmarked to the national dealership averages. Due to the large amount of data, dealerships were given reports that were fashioned like a stoplight. The items on the first page were the figures that needed immediate action. The project turned out to be a great success, but Porsche believes that they must continually improve in order to stay successful in such a dynamic economy. Porsche plans to have an annual or semi-annual meetings called corporate KPI conferences. The goal of these meetings is to discuss ideas about improvement and future development of the KPI system. Another anticipated plan is to give an award to the dealership of the quarter. These dealerships will serve as a best practice example for all dealerships. This concludes our presentation. We're now ready for your questions.